the French American thinker René Girard, in his ninth decade, was acclaimed by Michel Serre on his election to the Académie Française as the Charles Darwin of human sciences. I think that the Charles Darwin of human sciences phrase that was used by Michel Serre when Girard was admitted to the Académie Française is about the, the, uh, the simple elegance of his theory for explaining a huge amount of diverse phenomena, which is what Charles Darwin did with his theory of evolution by natural selection. Um, as, for, as for the planetary prophet, I think we see, we, he, he gives evidence of it working. Uh, the, the nature of modern warfare as total war from the time of Napoleon and modern history being built out of uh, rivalrous oppositions, like the long opposition between France and Germany, uh, between uh, Germany and Russia. Nowadays, between China and the United States, Girard could have predicted the outcome of the 2009 Copenhagen Climate Conference. He says the Chinese and the Americans are just two competing capitalist countries. They're rival brothers, and the Chinese just want more cars than the Americans. Uh, of course, the war on terror uh, is another is another modern uh, centre of fascination that Girard, uh, that Girard offers powerful insights into. So because of the power of his account, uh, I'm convinced by it. What sort of crisis and from whence does it come? The first of three planks in Girard's theory has to do with human desire. There's a three-bottle Girardian program. First, uh, uh, a powerful theory of desire that desire is something we borrow from another. So we're not, uh, we're not one-offs and uh, proudly autonomous the way we modern Westerners like to think. Our desire is derivative. Secondly, uh, that desire ramps up. Uh, we become, we become uh, envious of one another. We, des we desire what others have. Ultimately, we desire the being of another. Uh, you see that in the cult of celebrity. We desire the being of another, and we like to pull celebrities down. Uh, when this escalates in crowds, particularly in ancient and pre-modern societies, there's nothing to stop it. Girard, the second element of Girard's theory is very powerful and very shocking. That is, human culture and religion emerge out of a mechanism of collective violence. The crowd chooses uh, arbitrarily a victim, and out of the death of that victim comes peace and order. And out of this, uh, out of this human culture, human religion arise as human creations. The third element of Girard's theory, even more shocking, is that the Bible, and in particular uh, the prophets, the Psalms, Jesus and his passion, tell a different story. We know that the victim's innocent. And this mechanism starts to unravel from the time of Jesus. Until today, it's much harder to steal human violence by looking for a scapegoat. We're on to it. I mean, we know that that's what we're doing. We knew that witches weren't really witches. We knew that Jews in the Middle Ages didn't cause plagues. So that sort of mechanism doesn't work anymore. Girard believes that populations around the world whose desire is awakened by Western affluence and who are then systematically excluded from that affluence gravitate nowadays to Islamic Jihad in the same way that oppressed masses once found a rallying point in communism. Now, now, the war on terror, Girard's simple view uh, is that this isn't about a clash of civilizations, the so-called Huntington thesis, uh, the Anglosphere versus the rest. Uh, it's, it's, simply, it, it's simply the envy of the undeveloped world for the wealth and technological advantage of the West. And once that envy would have crystallized around communism, now it's crystallizing around Islamic Jihad. And in terms of religion, uh, Islamic Jihad is not very good Islam. And people who, uh, who have written about this, who have come out of Islamic Jihad, comment on how the jihadists, uh, they don't, they're not good at reciting the Quran. They don't know the prayers. Uh, they're, not, they're not spiritual people. With these stabilizing elements in place, the essentially positive nature of our mimetic desire allows the building up of various human cultures, languages and religions. Many people who read Girard say that he has an impossibly negative view of human nature and some have said that his views are really incompatible with the Catholic Christianity that he professes 
he's an adult convert to Catholicism uh, because he has such a negative uh, view of human motivations. You know, Genesis tells us God created it, uh, everything and it was good. And people say, Gerard's saying it's bad. That's not true. He, he, sees, uh, he sees the mimetic, that the, the imitative, desire-borrowing nature of human beings to be uh, in our DNA. It's what, it's what differentiates us from the animals. Uh, the, it's what enables us to learn uh, and to share and to build culture, particularly to learn languages, uh, as you see with infants. And th so imitation is good and creative. And we, we uh, learn um, we, as apprentices, as, as artists, as students, from role models. I mean, anyone who does distance education will tell you that, uh, that, that sitting in front of a teacher who inspires you uh, is a much stronger form of education. So, so the mimetic nature of human beings is good, but there's a dark side. And that dark side is we can become envious, then rivalrous, then our violence can escalate, and we can easily be caught up in the desires of inadequate models. The resurrection of Jesus begins a new creation beyond the violent sacred, offering human life new foundations. Uh, why Christianity? Well, not just Christianity, but also Judaism, uh, as uh, beginning with the Bible, tell a different story from the story of all human mythology and religion before it. In all those religions, uh, the victim who's randomly selected, killed, and a society makes peace around that uh, collective murder, because we all agree that there's a problem and we've got rid of them, uh, that's the beginning of religion and culture for Girard. In the Bible, we begin to hear those victims being vindicated. Uh, uh, Joseph, who was scapegoated by his brothers in the book of Genesis, doesn't pay back and his brother Benjamin is not scapegoated. They learn a lesson. The prophets take up the voice of the poor, uh, who are the victims. The Psal in the Psalms, we constantly hear the voice of someone who says, I am being unjustly persecuted. And uh, in the practice of Jesus, and particularly in his passion in the Gospels, this whole false sacred mechanism whereby humans make peace and order and meaning in the world is outed. Uh, now, it would be totally inappropriate to turn, to turn the Bible, the Gospels, Jesus, uh, his passion, into a plank for human superiority at the expense of others. So whatever this means, it means a thoroughly generous uh, and loving uh, approach in the spirit of Christ to everybody who's different. But uh, Girard doesn't say enough about this in his own writings, but many Girardians are beginning to, uh, to explore the compatibility of other religious traditions with Girard. Girard himself has written a little book in French uh, on what you can learn from the Hindu scriptures. The Buddhist, I mean Buddhism is a very complex range of religious phenomena, but the broad Buddhist notion about the discipline of desire as the basis of human contentment is very significant. Although Christianity values desire and values the individual person, perhaps more than Buddhism classically does. Uh, people are beginning to read Islam uh, in a way that is perhaps uh, more alert to, its, uh, to, to the theme of mercy in Islam over the theme of violence.